it's Khalid with Flatiron's Tuning. Today we're going to talk about six speech forms. So um, we've done a lot with uh, the, the previous generation cars, like the GDs, the 2002 to 2007 WRXs. Um, we've got a kit together for that. But if you followed our Pikes Peak video, you know that we had to do a six speed swap into our 2014 WRX race car uh, for this year's event. We've helped a couple of people do it before, but you know, having to do it ourselves in a very short window of time, we've kind of figured out all the little tricks of it, and so I wanted to kind of go through with what is actually involved. So uh, it's definitely possible to do a swap into a, a new 2008 to 2014 WRX. It's just a little bit different um, than the GDs. The problem, the main problem that you run into is the final drive and, and pairing up a six speed with it. So that's why there's a little bit more involved and we'll go into that uh, here in just a second. So we'll throw the car up in the air. Okay, so we're going to start, um, obviously the, the transmission bolts up to pretty much any EJ series block. So the transmission bolts in. First question that we get quite often is about the clutch. So with any transmission, the bell housing of the transmission determines the clutch that you use because the EJ series cranks are basically all the same. So whatever flywheel will bolt to that, but the bell housing of the transmission determines the clutch. So in the case of the six speed, that's where you need an STI six-speed clutch. Though on the earlier generation WRXs, the 2002 to 2005, that also have a push style, uh, I'm sorry, pull style clutch, you can retain a five-speed clutch if you wanted to. Uh, but on anything newer than two, uh, like 2006 and up on the WRX, they have a push style clutch, and that's completely incompatible with the STI. So you have to put in an STI transmission at that point. Um, so we put in an XD twin disc clutch. Um, the next question we get asked quite a bit about is axles. Um, so it turns out that the WRX axles will snap right into the STI transmission. So these, the front axles are just WRX front axles. Um, and that is pretty much true for most years except for like the earlier WRXs, but we'll get into that. Uh, we'll, we'll do another video on our 2004 WRX rally car that also has a six-speed swap into it. Long story short, you don't have to worry about the axles. Well, why does that matter? matters because the axle on the hub side determines the hub that you have to use and in the case if you wanted to use an STI axle well now you have to use STI hubs and that introduces a lot of complications as far as like bolt patterns and, st and such um, because except for 2004 the STIs are all 5x114.3 bolt pattern um, and they use a larger bearing and a larger hub and so that really complicates the swap and has a lot of extra parts you have to swap out. So if you just keep the WRX axles, you don't have to do that. It makes it a lot easier. So that's what we did. Um, there's a DC CD controller. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, then drive shaft. The drive shaft is different between the five speed and the six speed. Six speed is actually a longer transmission, so the drive shaft is shorter. So in this case, what we did is we used a, a drive shaft shop, carbon fiber drive shaft, but you can use uh, like an automatic WRX drive shaft. But uh, we like the drive shaft shop because it offers a lot of different options. All right, so we'll come to the back and we'll talk about the rear diff. Okay. So as I mentioned kind of at the beginning, the newer WRXs are a little bit tricky. And the main reason for that is because of the final drive ratio of, of the rear diff. So um, it's a, the, all the STIs in the US are 3.9 final drive, but some of them have a different transfer ratio than others. Basically starting base, pretty much in, in 2006, the transfer ratio in the STI changed to 1.1 to 1. So the rear ring and pinion ratio of the rear discs is not 3.9, it's 3.545 to 1. The WRX starting in 2008 has a 3.9 rear ring and pinion ratio. So you could not bolt a newer STI transmission with uh, in with the stock WRX rear diff. You could you'd either have to retrofit an older WRX rear diff basically from 2002 to 2005 only, 2006 and 2007 are, are also different, um, or you put in an R180. So there again we get a lot of questions. Well, so an R180 is more durable, so there's some advantages in going with it, and that's what we've done here. So this is an R180 diff in our 2014 WRX. So then the next question is, what axles do you use? Because the axles for an R180 and an R160 where they bolt into the diff are different. So um, on the older cars, you have to do a hybrid axle. It turns out that on the new cars, at least 2011 to 2014 and possibly 2008 to 2014, 
they, they change the bearing in the rear only so that the rear hubs on the WRX will accept an STI axle. So what we have here are just simply STI axles. So we put an STI R180 diff and STI axles bolts right into the hub. You don't have to change anything suspension wise or hub wise. They just bolt right in. So that it's an extra expense but because it just bolts up nice and simple it, it made the swap really easy. So, so again, we're basically using WR axles up front, SCI axles in the rear, and STI R180 diff in the back to match the transmission. Um, the other thing I'll mention just briefly is the R180 diffs do have a different mount and different bolt pattern in the newer cars. Um, so you do have to change out the transmission or the rear diff cross member to get that all to bolt up. Um, beyond that, there's just some, um, some other brackets and bushings and stuff that you need. Uh, we are running a Cusco transmission mount, which is which works for both the five-speed and the six-speed mount. Um, typically, if you don't already have one that will work with both, you want to put in an STI transmission mount as well. Um, the shifter linkage is a little bit different, um, so you have to make sure that the shifter linkage will go with the model of car that you have. And then beyond that, um, you just need to put in a center diff controller. So it's, it's really that simple. If you if you retain the axles and the hubs. Uh, up, up front and then the hubs in the rear by using an STI axle and an STI rear diff, the swap is actually very, very simple and it's a lot more cost effective than it would seem because you don't have to worry about brakes. Like we're still running the R160 parking brake, so we're still running 5100 bolt pattern for the time being. Um, WRX suspension, you don't have to change any of that out. So again, it's much, much simpler than uh, it might be made out to be on the internet. So we'll, we'll take a quick look at the DCCD controller and, uh, and that, that pretty much wraps it up. Okay, so, so again, just a quick note, you do have to make sure that the shift linkage that you attach to the transmission matches the body style of the car, uh, because where the shifter comes through the, the transmission tunnel is different in the newer cars versus the older cars, so that, you do have to make sure that that works. If not, you can actually get blocked out of, I believe it's third gear. Um, but a quick note about the DCCD controller. That's another question that we get a lot. We're using the MAP DCCD controller which we have, we actually stock now and is available on our website. We really like this DCCD controller and we're going to go into more depth with that in another video, but just really quickly, we get a lot of questions, do you need a DCCD controller? The answer to that is no, you do not absolutely need one. It's recommended, but you can run the transmission without it. If you do not connect the DCCD controller, basically the transmission, or uh, the center diff is going to be operating in full rear bias. So you'll have the maximum rear bias that the, that, that center diff of the transmission that you get uh, would run. So it could be as much as 65% bias to the rear. Um, if you're in a uh, part of the country where you get snow or, uh, or slick roads and stuff like that, part of the downside to that is if you lose traction in the back, there's not going to be a lot of force translated to the front wheel. So it's going to be, behave a lot more like a rear wheel drive car than an all wheel drive car. Um, but you, you absolutely can do it. Um, but if you install a DCCD controller, then depending on the controller that you use, you get you know a lot of control over the center diff. So it could be something as simple as just a, a manual thumb wheel that you would use, and then you could manually control the walk-up. We like the, DC, uh, the MAP DCCD controller because it gives you a ton of options and a ton of different control. Um, and again, we'll go into detail with that later. But you can actually with this with this controller, you can run it in a manual mode or they have a lot of preset modes and you can actually even tune the behavior of the center diff um, almost like you would tune the ECU of the car. So it gives you tons of options and then your the functionality of that center diff is going to be much much closer to what a factory STI would be with the full DCCD controller as well. And this is a, a pretty affordable option. The wiring itself is actually not that bad. Um, so there's just a few pieces of input that you have to give it and then you get a, a fully functioning center diff in addition. So again, you don't have to do it. If you don't, you just have a rear bias car and that's it. But uh, just the simple addition of a DCCD controller and then you're you know, almost getting the same level of performance out of the uh, STI transmission as an STI does. So that's it. Thanks for watching the video and uh, you know, we'll, we'll get some more things going and, and uh, feel free to give us a call if you have any questions. Thanks.